You watching this right now have probably started making YouTube videos and you've started getting a handful of views on each video, but you're not seeing much growth and you can't seem to catch a break or blow up like everyone keeps hoping to do. And honestly, you've probably thought, are my videos just bad? The truth is, I can't tell you that and no YouTuber can. But that doesn't mean you can't make changes using the actionable steps in today's video and start seeing growth rapidly. Let's go. Hey, I'm LJ with streamscheme.com. I'm also a variety streamer over on twitch.tv slash LJM underscore. There are links to both of those in the description. I would love it if you came and checked me out while I was live. And today, as I said, I'm going to be covering the seven major reasons why nobody is watching your videos, because I know that a huge amount of you guys have started to and are trying to make YouTube content in order to grow your streams. Today, I'm going to focus on giving you very actionable steps. I keep using that word because I want you to understand this video is about diagnosing what you're doing wrong or where you're going wrong and then finding positive ways to implement changes and grow from there. I promise you, if you watch all seven tips of this video, you will be able to go away and actually start putting in hard work and growing your channel. But I also want to hear from you guys and find out how many of you have started making YouTube content and if you want more content like this video. In the description, you'll see two options. And if you click on one, it's actually a vote in a poll and it will update dynamically and show me and everyone else who looks down there how many people have started YouTube and if they want more content like this. The only reason why I'm able to do this dynamic description poll is because of a tool called Mercury by Stream Elements, who are also the sponsor of today's video. The Mercury Beta is a new suite of tools from Stream Elements that helps you engage with your audience on YouTube, which, surprise, engagement is kind of important when you're trying to build a community, especially when you're just starting out. It turns your description from what we've known for a long time into a dynamic description that automatically updates to display goals, polls, or even spotlight your latest supporter, such as new subscriber. This way, new subscribers get their name in the description until someone else subscribes. Early on, you guys know that I replied to every single comment because I wanted to build a community aspect to this channel. I would have loved these generators when I first started out as a way to push and create a better CTA for you guys to subscribe. The hardest section is getting people to subscribe for the first zero to 1000 subs. And if you're in that point and you're getting views, but people aren't subscribing, it might be worth checking out Mercury and seeing whether or not you can use this dynamic descriptions to help boost your subscriptions and help grow your community from the get go. So click the link in the description to try out Mercury today and start growing your channel. You'll also find time codes down there so you can skip ahead to wherever you want. But for now, let's get into it. Straight out of the gate, I feel like a lot of you guys who have watched me before know exactly what I'm going to say, but I have to throw it out there again. Right now, your videos hold almost no value for anybody. I have mentioned over and over and over and over again how gameplay, montages, highlights, and just plain old VOD uploads onto YouTube don't hold any value, especially if you're a new creator. Nobody is going to watch those when there are larger creators out there making better content than that in the same space. I get asked daily, dozens of times in my Twitter DMs and in the YouTube comments to check out people's YouTube channels and give them reviews. The amount of Call of Duty and Apex Legends and Fortnite montages that I have now seen is absolutely wild. The amount of channels that have hundreds of videos and they're all Let's Plays of Barbie Dreamtime Adventures or Minecraft or whatever you want to do is also wild and none of them are getting views. They all look the same and none of them have a unique value as to why you would click on them. Why would I watch you guys play Barbie Dreamtime Adventures when I could go watch Dr. Disrespect or XQC play Barbie Dreamtime Adventures? It just doesn't make sense. Side note, I'm sorry if this is coming across harsh, but I feel like for this particular tip, I need to be very clear about it because no matter how many times I say this, I still get people asking me in the Discord, should I upload my VODs? Should I upload my gameplay? Should I upload my montage? And the answer is, sure. But it's not going to help you grow as a creator. YouTube has moved on from the golden age of Let's Plays. Now you need to show real value in order to stand out and start getting views and clicks. And yes, before you start typing it out, I will answer it already. Entertainment and comedy is value, and that is something you can use to grow. But is your entertainment and comedy going to be good enough to stack up against giant creators who are already making that exact type of content in this industry and in this field? Do you really think you're able to take on Markiplier, Jacksepticeye, PewDiePie, all those people without having a unique reason? And as much as people love to say that Twitch doesn't care about small creators and it doesn't help them grow, at the end of the day, neither does YouTube. They don't care if you're a tiny creator. Your content is going to be put up against and is going to compete in the algorithm as the biggest guys out there. This is both good and bad because it means that any video can go viral. Any video can be put in the search algorithm. But it's also bad because it means that you have to work so much harder 
than much bigger, well-established people with resources. And if you don't, you're going to get washed away in the literal hundreds of thousands of hours of content that is uploaded to YouTube constantly. So my actionable tip is to think about your content and take it up a notch. If we look at a creator like Point Crow, he grew in his niche by creating incredibly difficult game challenges and then cutting them down into solid videos about the challenge. Or he did mod spotlights for a game and turned them into very entertaining and comedic videos. Be like Point Crow. Find a way to take your gameplay and highlights and give it a unique twist that hasn't been done before because at the end of the day, there are a lot of ways to stand out. Next up, let's talk about being discovered as a new creator. There are thousands of ways that you can start getting yourself discovered and start telling YouTube with signals exactly what your videos are about and where they should be recommended. In fact, my other videos, I literally open up my trench coat, drop my pants and reveal everything to you about how I grew this channel and how I started appearing next to some of the biggest creators in this niche. The biggest thing I want you to do right now is look at my description. Look how big they are and how they are filled with so many keywords. They're keywords that not only match my title, but support it. I even have time codes that pose the questions that people are searching for. You guys can do so much right now to start increasing the chances of your channel growing and all of the information is available on how to do it. It just takes work to actually implement it. I really, really recommend taking the extra step and learning video optimization. I know this tip was short, but my actionable tip for it is really important. You need to understand the actual releasing and optimization for a video is the most important part of the video. If you spend days and weeks and months making a fantastic video, but you do nothing on the release, no optimization, no sharing, no playlists, no tags, absolutely nothing, then YouTube doesn't know it's a good video. They don't know who to share it to. They know nothing about what to do with it which means it's never going to get seen by anyone. The guides, the tools, everything you need to start optimizing your videos and being discovered is linked in my description. I've got videos that cover them entirely. So my actual tip, get vidIQ, watch those videos after you finish this one and start optimizing your channel. The next four tips after this one are going to be absolutely crucial for your long-term growth as a YouTuber. So stay with me. But first, we need to talk about your focus. From what I have seen when I go check out the videos that you guys have uploaded, because a lot of you guys, again, ask me to check you out, a lot of you have no focus. You make videos about all sorts of topics so that YouTube has no idea what to do. One day you'll be uploading a six hour gameplay, the next it'll be a montage of Fortnite, and then on Fridays it'll be your colonoscopy VODs, and then you'll have a weird OBS tutorial at the end. It doesn't make sense, there's no focus to it. You're signaling so many different topics that your channel is about that YouTube doesn't know who to recommend you to and they don't know what audience will fit your videos. The YouTube algorithm is sat there wondering, do we recommend this guy to gaming channels? Do we recommend this to OBS tutorials? Do we recommend this to people who search up how to do colonoscopies at home on a Friday night by themselves? Which now after saying that, I really hope that isn't a thing and please don't Google that. The other problem with this is that even if you do manage to get viewers on your channel, because there's so many different types of content coming out, it means that you guys have zero consistency and the viewers are less likely to subscribe and even less likely to even click on another video when they check out your channel. On the topic of consistency, we also have to talk about formatting because the format of your videos seem to have no rhyme or reason. Some of them are 45 seconds long, some of them are 30 minutes long, some of them are six hours long. And because of this, it becomes very difficult for someone to understand what type of content they're going to be getting week by week. And on the topic of short form content, I have to finally answer YouTube shorts because you guys ask me every single week and I'm going to do something opposite to what every other creator is doing. YouTube shorts are not a get rich quick scheme. They are not a get viewers quick scheme. In fact, if you fall for this trap, you are going to be in hot water long term. If YouTube shorts do pick up and start working for you, then you have to stick with that format of content. It is very hard once you have grown and once you have a bunch of 45 second views to then convert people over to watching a 10, 15, 20 minute video. And it's even harder to convert people from a YouTube short of 45 seconds to a three to four hour long live stream on Twitch. Your audience is subscribing for a 45 to 60 second long video. This is micro format content. You need to understand that when someone subscribes for something, it's because they want more of that content. If you're hoping that people are going to then watch your 30 minute gameplays or your three hour streams, you have to understand a large majority of your audience just won't convert because it is a different type of content. I keep seeing educators push YouTube shorts as a way to grow, but I haven't seen any of them say, hey, if you do this, you're going to shoehorn yourself into having to produce that type of content consistently and it'll be hard to push out of it. This channel focuses on streams, which is why it's super important for me to bring this up here. 
because if you guys want to push from micro format content to the longest format content, it is going to be incredibly difficult. My actionable tip here is to think about focus or consistency. Pick a topic and stick to it. Pick a format and stick to it. Focus on what your subscribers want once you start seeing growth. Do you want to do game reviews? Focus on it. Do you want to do tutorials? Focus on it. Do you want to do colonoscopy videos? Focus on it. Okay, if you guys have watched this long, it's time to give you the make it or break it nitty gritty tips for growing your YouTube channel. But first, I want to throw it out there. If this video helps you out at all, consider subscribing to it, consider liking it as well. It would really help us out. And if you want to meet up with thousands of other content creators all trying to grow, then check out our Discord. We don't do any go lives, any spam there. It is a purely educational Discord with also dozens of free resources that you guys can download and start using in your streams, in your YouTube videos, and so much more. Check it out. It is linked in the description. Go nuts. It is all for you entirely free. If I said to you, what does YouTube care most about? You would all say money and you'd be right. But if I said to you, okay, what does YouTube care about second? You'd all say keeping people on the platform. And I'd say, yes, but what does that mean? And you'd say Re retention rate. And I'd say, yeah, that was a weird bit. <laughs> Watch time and retention rate are incredibly important to getting your videos recommended and growing on YouTube. And it's really simple. YouTube wants to keep people on the platform so they can keep serving them videos. The longer you keep people watching means the video is better and it means they're going to stay on the platform. Every single video I look at really struggles with retention rate. It's almost like they just start a video midway through it. But you need a hook, you need an introduction. People need to know what they're going to be watching. A problem I now have is my hooks and my introductions are a little bit too long, but I've been trying to slim them down for you guys, try to make it better because that'll boost my retention rate. I also try to boost it by adding jokes here and there, telling you guys that we're going to cover crucial tips coming up soon. I break these down constantly to try and keep you guys watching because the truth is, if you guys aren't watching more than 56% of the video, I'm in trouble. Generally, the rule of thumb, if I'm trying to boost my retention rate, though, is I try and be entertaining and engaging. The key word there be try, not succeed at that. My actionable tip here is that when you're scripting or planning your videos out, you need to consider where the lull points are going to be, where the boring parts are, and then slim them down or flash them up with some jokes or something that'll push people through. It's crucial that people don't get bored and click off the video. Cut out dead air, add music, switch tracks up, remove music in certain segments. As long as it doesn't get repetitive and boring and people feel like they're getting something out of it, they'll usually keep watching the video. Once the video is uploaded and it's been up for a few days, go and look at your retention rate graphs and figure out how you can improve and where people are falling off. So I know I just said retention rate's important and I know I've talked about click-through rate as well a lot, but let's talk about click-through rate a little bit more carefully. Honestly, thumbnails are so important that it required me to do a whole video. You'll find that on the channel. A good thumbnail pretty much makes or breaks whether or not someone is going to click on your video. I've found that if I do a half-assed thumbnail, it literally goes like that. The video just doesn't perform. I think the golden rule from my video about thumbnails that I want to tell you guys here is to remember that every single thumbnail is much smaller than what it looks like when you're making it on your big screen. The most important part to remember is that when you actually upload that thumbnail, it's like jumping into an ice bath. There's a lot of shrinkage and things get really small. Most of the time you guys add text to the tiny thumbnails as well, which makes it incredibly hard to read and it makes it fairly useless. Another big one is user intent. I see a lot of new creators mimicking Harris Heller and Linus Tech Tips and weirdly a little bit me these days, which blows my mind. Essentially, what you guys do is you add your own face and make it a key element in the thumbnail. You'll throw some words in, maybe a microphone or a PC, but you have to remember guys, their thumbnails sell because people know their faces. Everyone knows Harris, everyone knows Linus. If you want to make a video about tech, then use tech to your advantage and make it the focus of the thumbnail. When you're starting out, you have to remember people don't care who you are. You need to pitch them a different thing that they're interested in to get the click. I know, I know when I started out, I didn't do this. I used my face in every single thumbnail. It's different. I didn't make my thumbnail the main focus. I always make the main focus something else visually that tells the story. And then I used my face as a way to slowly build my brand. The truth is, I also have a lot more background, a lot more experience in video SEO than you guys, which means I knew what I was going into. I knew the problems I was facing and I knew I could probably make it work. My actual tip here is to simplify your thumbnails down hard. Make the actual elements larger, easier to read and understand what is going on. If you can make people click from visuals, then focus on that. Don't use more than four words max on the thumbnail. Don't repeat your title and make the words snappy and direct. Once you find a style that works for your thumbnail, there's nothing wrong with sticking to it and slowly optimizing it over time. I know I need new headshots taken for my thumbnails, but they do work still. So there's no point me changing them aggressively or pushing to a different style. 
you guys know what you're going to get when I upload a video. Okay, now for the absolute hardest tip of this entire video. I've given you a lot of actionable things you can go away and do, but this one is going to be pretty brutal for you. And, and I don't know how many of you will actually manage to do this tip and actually use it properly. The truth is your videos are probably not very good yet. And you need to understand why that is. But no one can help you with that. You have to go watch your own videos and be very brutal about what you can do to improve. Stack them up against the biggest creators out there. Because as I said, YouTube doesn't care if you're small or big. You have to push yourself to make the best content possible. The people who watch your video don't care about the backstory behind it. They don't know that you're only working with a $50 mic. They don't know that you spend hours working on these graphics. If it doesn't look good, if the final product doesn't sound good, people will click off. And if those people click off, those signals to YouTube say, eh, this video wasn't very good. So it doesn't matter what is going on behind the scenes. You guys have to do your absolute best. You have to find places you can improve every single video. And I honestly think you guys can do it. I believe in you. Personally, I don't make great content. Hell, I don't even make good content. I think my content is subpar, it is simple, and it can get a bit repetitive. I think my quality is terrible, my video image sometimes looks really degraded, my audio constantly has to be tweaked, my lighting is simple, and my thumbnails just constantly need to be optimized to be better. But, I'm doing all those things. Every single video, I slowly try and improve myself. I add a light here or there, I update my audio, I change how my compressor sounds, and I tweak to improve myself. I watch other creators, and I go, damn, I am not creating good enough content if I want to stack up against them. And so I improve myself. I'm going to reiterate everything I've just said as my actionable tip. I want you to step away from your content. Put yourself in someone else's shoes who's going to watch your videos. I want you to then watch your video and make note of the things that you think aren't good. Compare yourself to the people who are larger and understand that you have to push yourself to improve. You guys can do this. It might suck to look at yourself and see all your problems laid out, but it won't suck once you actually fix them, when you see how much you've improved, and when you start growing on YouTube. You've got this. Okay, the final tip, and I appreciate all of you having patience getting up to this part of the video. And the final tip is patience. I think I've mentioned this before multiple times as well, but hopefully explaining it this way will help you guys actually understand what I'm talking about. The truth that nobody tells you is that making a YouTube channel is easy. Uploading your first video is easy. But the truth is, the easiest thing you can do on your entire YouTube channel is give up after three or four videos because you don't get overnight success. It took me 25 videos, and that is 25 weeks of uploading before I started seeing any real growth or any real success. But I knew if I had patience and I kept making quality content, that eventually I would start getting growth. You need to keep pushing and keep making content week by week. But also the truth is, is that you need to make content that has staying power for those weeks. The reason I do education content is because in two years time, people are still going to be looking up how to add emotes to Twitch, how to start a YouTube gaming channel. And that means my videos will still come up in the search results and will still be recommended to those people. If I did a video where it was a montage, people probably won't get recommended that in two years time. Every second or third month on this channel, I produce three or four videos that get almost no views in the first two weeks. These are the months where I'm focusing on long-term growth. I'm focusing on evergreen topics that people are going to be searching for years to come. You guys don't click them for some reason, but I understand that. And I understand that these videos are going to marinate and they're going to do well in a few years or in a few months time when they start bringing in new users who are trying to become streamers. My actionable tip here is to prioritize long-term growth and consider what you can do now to see your channel have long-term sustainability. Have patience, produce content that'll do well over time and understand that growth is not a sprint, it is a marathon. But an extra tip, a small secret tip for you, and that is that I want you to go down to the comments and I want you to write the word POW, P-O-W, because that's the 100% crew badge today. Let me know in the comments if you watched to this point. Thank you so much. I hope this video was helpful and I will see you guys next week. Bye all.